Hey again, it's me, Michael McDonald. Uh, this, this video and other videos I make are associated with my uh, May Day flight tutoring Facebook page where I offer online flight tutoring real time with uh, students who need uh, preparation for their written exam or for their, their flight test or just have questions. So you can find information on that on my Mayday Flight Tutoring Facebook page, which you can find if you just type into Facebook at Mayday Flight Tutoring. And it'll take you there and join up. That's great. I post interesting videos and um, uh, things from the net uh, regarding aviation. So it's a lot of fun for me to do that. And now I'm making these videos. This is number two. The first one I did was uh, with regarding to the V speeds and how they affect and are affected by aircraft performance. And I was thinking, okay, well, what's the next video I should do? And uh, I'm, I'm still thinking about, you know, when students are at the pre-flight ground oral portion with me and some of the areas where I found that students struggled. Um, so I thought I'd whip off a few videos that sort of cover those topics. And uh, the V-speeds was one, often uh, you're interrogated during a pre-flight by your examiner about the V-speeds. Um, the other one is related to the stall speed of the airplane. Now, I'll probably do a separate video about how a wing stalls, and I'm sure many of you have a fairly good understanding of that. There's lots of resources on the internet, to, uh, which are graphical as well, that you can actually see how the stall occurs. Um, but one of the questions that I ask on the pre-flight uh, oral ground portion, it's a very simple question, and it usually, st it usually stumps people uh, for the complete answer. And uh, I might frame it this way. I would say there are eight things that affect the stall speed of an airplane in flight. Can you tell me uh, some of those eight things that affect the stall speed of the airplane? Um, so, without further ado, I'm just going to go through them with a little brief uh, explanation of each. Um, not in any particular order. Uh, the first one that affects the stall speed of the airplane is the pow pow <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> is the power setting. The power setting uh, of your engine. And uh, basically, the higher the power setting, the lower the stall speed. And why is that? Well, there's a number of reasons. Quite simply, I can explain it this way, is that, you know, you have in front of you with a propeller airplane, a big fan, uh, the propeller, and it's blowing air over the wings as well as the tail surface. So even in idle, even when the engine is idling, it's energizing um, the laminar flow or the smooth airflow over the wing of the airplane, even a high wing airplane, um, and it's also, the, 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 the propeller relative wind is also flying over the tail surfaces. The tail surfaces, the horizontal stabilizer, and of course the vertical stabilizer. So basically, you know, if an airplane is, uh, wing is approaching a critical angle of attack, well, any, any relative wind coming from the propeller is going to energize um, the wing. So it'll actually... Um, delay the point at which the angle of attack becomes critical. So the higher the power setting, generally speaking, the lower the stall speed. So that's number one. Uh, number two, which is very common uh, and obvious answer, is the weight of the airplane. So the whole purpose of the wing is to carry the airplane in the air. Um, and of course that happens with the two forces, the Bernoulli force and the Newton force. The Bernoulli force being the airflow over the top of the wing creates a low pressure area which pulls the wing up in the air and creates downwash. And the relative wind underneath the wing bounces off the bottom of the wing, cr produces downwash. Um, and that's how the wing flies. So the heavier the airplane, in particular the nose of the airplane, the more of an angle that the wing has to be relative to the airflow in order to maintain flight. So the heavier the airplane, um, the higher the stall speed. Okay, so the stall speed is closer to cruise. So obviously you want to keep your airplane 
uh, within the limits prescribed in the pilot operating handbook. More weight means a higher stall speed. Less weight means a lower stall speed. Uh, related to weight is loading. Loading is, is, is like weight, um, commonly known as the G-forces. So, for example, if you're in a dive, and as you're diving, the, your, the G-forces are, are neutral, it's 1G. But as you pull out of the dive, the inertia of the airplane wants to keep going down, um, but you change the angle of attack of the wings to create lift, and now you have an equal and opposite force, and the result is loading, which is basically equivalent to weight. As the airplane doesn't know the difference between G-loading and weight, so loading. Related to loading number three, or I should say number four, is the bank angle of a level turn. Okay, so when you're doing the steep turn, you may notice, especially if you try to lift a leg, you may notice that if you're doing a level steep turn, 45 degrees, anything beyond 30 degree bank angle, but for, say 45 degrees, is that uh, you're up to 1.4 Gs, okay? So in order for the airplane to maintain level flight, you have to increase the angle of attack, so the nose has to pitch up a bit. And that creates loading, which is the equivalent of weight, so your stall speed goes up. So you're closer to the stall when you are in a level steep turn. Now, if you let the airplane descend, then you're not trying to maintain level, and the weight of the airplane and gravity allows it to descend, you're not going to experience those Gs, and the stall speed will remain unaffected. So bank angle, that's number four. So number one, power. Number two, weight. Number three, loading and associated. Number four, the bank angle. Uh, I'm going to leave number five uh, to the end because it's a little bit of a discussion, so I'll just switch over to number six, contamination. People often forget this. What, what are we talking about contamination? Well, contamination is anything that disturbs the smooth airflow over or under the wing. So icing is a common example, rime ice, clear ice, mixed ice. You know, it's going to disturb the smooth airflow, the laminar flow of how the, how the relative air goes across the wing relatively and disturbed at the lower angles of attack. Um, of course, that would break up with contamination on the wing. So contamination. Uh, number seven, um, often uh, disregarded by people or forgotten, is turbulence. So, well, turbulence, uh, what exactly is turbulence? Well, turbulence is an abrupt shift in the relative wind um, to the wing of the airplane. So you could have, um, say, a gust, actually, say you're flying close to the stall speed, slowly, say you're flying at like 14, 15 degrees angle of attack, which of course you can't see because most general aviation airplanes don't have an angle of attack indicator. But then a gust comes from below strong and it's at the critical or beyond the critical angle of attack, your wing will stall. And uh, so turbulence, um, vertical and horizontal shear um, can affect the stall speed of the airplane. Uh, number eight is the use of flaps. Okay, so you have your wing and then when, when you lower your flaps, especially when you're using like the 10 degree takeoff setting uh, on a 152, you're, you're, you're adjusting the camber of the wing to make it a better wing and that reduces your stall speed. Um, because the wing is more effective. Now that only works to a point because as you lower the flaps, you're also increasing drag, okay? But generally speaking, in the low flap settings, you're increasing the lift capability of the airplane by allowing it to fly. Uh, it actually lowers the, lowers the stall speed. Um, and even with full flaps and with all that drag, this is why with the specialty landings, we're coming in with 30 degrees of flaps in the Cessna 152, then we've got our stall speed at the VSO, which is 35 knots indicated airspeed. Um, and uh, we come in at a slightly faster speed, about 1.3 or so of that in, in the approach. But the whole idea is we want to have that stall speed sl uh, slow, uh, a low stall speed for the flare and landing for a nice um, low speed landing. So yeah, the flaps add drag, but they also reduce um, they also reduce the stall speed. So like the difference between VS, the stall speed clean with zero flaps, 40 knots, and with 30 degrees of flaps, it's gone down to 35 knots. Add the fact that you probably got a little bit of power coming in 
which also reduces the stall speed. It allows you to fly slower, slower safely for the landing. So, so that's one, two, three, four, six, seven, and eight. Number five is center of gravity. Now there's a kind of a related discussion topic during the pre-flight oral ground portion and then your flight test the oral ground portion is like how does center of gravity affect aircraft performance? Well, I mean it affects aircraft performance in a number of ways, but in talking about the stall speed and it's all sort of mated together, generally the way it works is like this, is that an airplane is designed to be stable, okay? It's stable um, along the lateral, at, sorry, the longitudinal axis, so it, so the nose up and nose down, that the center of gravity is slightly forward of the center of lift of the wings. So say the wings here, and this is the front of the airplane here, the center of gravity is slightly heavier than the center of lift. And what that does is it allows the airplane to fly at trim speed. Eventually, depending on how your, your, your elevator is set, it will fly the trim speed, whatever nose attitude you have. Now, as you increase um, the weight on the front of the airplane, in order to fly straight and level, you actually have to compensate with more back pressure and a higher angle of attack. So the more forward the center of gravity, the higher the stall speed. Um, and that's a normal design um, attribute of, of a standard airplane. Aerobatic airplanes um, tend to be, tend to have a, slightly further back CFG because they need to be able to perform snap maneuvers. However, as the CFG goes backwards towards the wing, well, two things happen. One is, is that it lowers the stall speed because the nose is less heavy. You require less of an angle of attack to the relative airflow to maintain level flight. Um, so that, that reduces your stall speed, but the trade-off is, is that it also reduces stability. And of course, the worst case scenario is if you have an airplane that has got a very apt C of G, then the airplane can become practically unrecoverable in a stall, and it could actually stall backwards. So, yeah, so those are the seven things that affect the stall speed of the airplane. Number one, power setting. Higher the power, the lower the stall speed in the converse. Number two, weight. More weight it requires a greater angle of attack to keep the airplane in the air. So the more weight, the higher the stall speed. The less weight, the lower the stall speed. Loading, which is like weight, it's G-forces, same thing. More loading, higher stall speed, less loading, lower stall speed. Bank angle is, a, is an attribute of loading. So a level turn, you're going to have more Gs, more loading, the equivalent of weight, higher stall speed. Uh, center of gravity, as I just discussed, more forward center of gravity raises the stall speed. Uh, more aft center of gravity decreases the stall speed. Number six, contamination. So a contaminated wing and tail surfaces will uh, increase the stall speed uh, simply because the aircraft will reach the critical angle of attack sooner because you're disrupting the flow of the airflow, the flow of the air over the wing. Number seven, turbulence, which is abrupt shear uh, to the uh, wing cord. That's going to affect the stall speed. You could have, you know, you may notice if you're flying uh, close to maximum endurance and you get a gust of wind, you hear the stall horn go meep. Me like that. Well, that's because your stall speed that you've reached your stall speed, and uh, at a higher speed. Number seven. Oh, sorry, that was number seven. And number eight. Finally, is the flap setting more flaps lowers the stall speed, but the trade-off is you also have drag. So there you go. A quick little recap of the eight factors that affect the stall speed of an airplane in flight. I hope you enjoyed this video, and talk to you soon.